Do analog multimeters really belong to museums? Are they so old and chunky to be called outdated in our modern digital world? Well, the answer is yes and no. The analog multimeter is like the Nokia 3310 in today's world. Digital multimeters like those are superior almost in every aspect of design to analog multimeters, but they also lack a few tiny features that this one have. Also, they are becoming so rare that our future generations might see them only in the history books. A bit of history. Multimeters are not an ancient technology. They are barely 100 years old. The need to have a tool to troubleshoot electrical issues became popular as we started to use electricity. The first multimeter was invented in 1920 by British post officer engineer Donald McAday. The story goes that he was so frustrated to carry a bunch of different tools when working on telecom lines. So he merged them and made a single tool that could measure amperes, volts and ohms, he named it aviometer. Its creation was inspired by another instrument called the galvanometer, which was created a hundred years earlier. It was used to detect electrical currents and cause the compass needle to move from side to side. After the creation of the aviometer, the multimeter's functionalities and capabilities were improving exponentially over the years until the invention of the transistor, leading to the creation of those digital multimeters. Analog multimeters and other analog test equipment have a moving coil meter at the core like here. As the name implies, the moving coil meter is equipped with a lightweight coil that is pivoted and attached to the meter needle. It is held in place with a magnetic field created by a fixed magnet. When current flows through the coil, it creates a magnetic field that interacts with the fixed magnet, producing force that moves the needle. By varying the number of coil turns, changing the strength of the magnetic field, or changing other parameters, we can extend the measuring range. Unfortunately, using an analog multimeter is not as simple as using a digital one, but it has a perk. The analog multimeter can measure currents and voltages without any power source. If you need to perform other measurements like resistance or continuity, then you'll have to add the battery. Let's begin with measuring the current. First, we connect the props to the proper terminals. So it will be COM and the milliampere or the 10 ampere jack. If you're not sure what current is about to be measured, start from the highest range and then lower it down for accurate measurements. As you can see, the measured value is displayed on the screen, but analog multimeters don't have the scale for all the dial positions. So you must proportionally calculate your measured value, taking into account your chosen measuring range. For example, on the Peak Tech 3385 analog multimeter, there is just one scale for DC current measurements, which is designed for 10 ampere range. If you choose the 500 milliampere range, your two ampere tick mark will represent value of 100 milliamperes. Of course, with some practice, you can do the calculations in your head, but if you just began using an analog multimeter, you can refer to the provided data sheet. But not only that, you can also browse through hundreds of thousands of different products and accessories. When measuring voltage, you must pay attention to the polarity. In comparison to the digital multimeter, the analog one doesn't have polarity protection, and if pushed too hard, you might make an art sculpture from the needle. Don't do this. See, the needle goes the other way. Measuring resistance is no different to other measurements, but there is a twist. First, we need to plug the three AAA batteries in this case and calibrate the meter. To do so, we need to short circuit the probes, like so. And then you can notice that the needle is showing through from the other side, so, and it's not on zero. So now we need to use the adjustment knob and to set it to zero. And after that, we can take measurements with no fear. Here we have a potentiometer. And as you can see, as I change the resistance, it shows a different value. As you can see, those measurements are not as accurate as the ones that you get from the digital multimeter, but there is a little feature that can reduce it. And this is this mirror right here. Why do you need a mirror? Well, it helps to eliminate the parallax error, which is a visual error. It can occur when the reading is taken not looking directly on the needle. In other words, for accurate measurements, the needle and the reflection have to be aligned. 
The last perk that we have here on the analog multimeter is the fast response of the needle. Right here we have a function generator that produces a sine wave with a frequency of 10 Hz. This specific digital multimeter can show you the small variation with its digital analog bar graph, but you can clearly see it right here on the analog one. If you are still using an analog multimeter, please let us know for what applications and if you are looking for one, go to TME's website.